Hello, I'm Russell Broadbent, member for Monash, and this is Cheryl Drayton, my senior Aboriginal elder in my district. And I'm just going to hand over to Cheryl to open that conversation. Cheryl. Thank you, Russell. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the land on which uh, Russell's office sits, the land of the Kurnai in Monash, and um, Barakalong in particular, and pay my respects to ancestors uh, past and emerging. And it's lovely to be here with Russell today. Thanks. Cheryl, you know that a few uh, months ago, and, and for the last five years, I've been advocating for The Voice. Um, I've spoken on it, I've given speeches on it, I've written on it, I've done essays on it, uh, with, a, with a view that we have a group of people in, in, our, in our nation um, that die earlier, that um, uh, have, are subject to disease that the rest of us are not, the rest of the country isn't subject to, and live in uh, more difficult positions and have di more difficult housing, etc., etc., etc. That has been my drive all the way through. Um, but also on ABC Radio a few, a few weeks ago, I said, the f but the first thing we have to do is listen to our Aboriginal elders. So Cheryl contacted me straight away and we had a discussion. And you're going to hear today part of what, how that discussion went. I argued very strongly for my position with Cheryl as we had the conversation over quite a long period of time. And Cheryl argued her position and the reasons for it. Um, so I am, I am here today to hear, so you can hear just what went on between us. So Cheryl, when you came in, what happened? Um, I spoke about uh, the Aboriginal position um, versus the voice. And uh, it hasn't changed and I've spoke to many groups, um, not Aboriginal groups across Monash um, and still people want to know more about the voice. The main thing about the voice is that we haven't authorised those people to act on our, on our behalf. Um, the reality of that is that it's a, um, an elected elite of, of people who think that having us in the constitution is going to be the right thing and how is that, and they've not been able to explain how that's going to make any difference to grassroots people. Now I'm advocating for grassroots people because I believe that local solutions, local um, people like Russell and other businesses around, we're able to come together and find out those solutions. And an example of this stuff is that recently we just had um, our Aboriginal health um, organisation remove themselves uh, back to, to um, further into, um, into East Gippsland. And so it left us without um, having a medical centre. So we were able to work with West Gippsland Healthcare Group, who then went about making sure that we had an, a, an Aboriginal nurse, a registered nurse, come in and work with community and we've got a hospital liaison officer and, and they have been able to uh, lift the data that's required to say whether closing the gaps through that process is going to be met. Um, now Cheryl, that cost West Gippsland Health quite a bit of money, didn't it? Um, it, it did. And where did that money come from? The, the money comes from um, the state government but it's also handed down from the federal government to the state to have um, these, the, the Close the Gap Forum is about um, identifying those gaps that are out there in regional Victoria and in, in metropolitan Melbourne in our case. But I think the important thing about all of that stuff but is... that money didn't come from um, the Closing the Gap money, did it? No. It just came straight out from West Gippsland Health? Yes, it did. Yes. I'm assuming they got a grant for it, but more importantly they've got a registered Aboriginal nurse who was working with the community to address their health issues and the process is that she is capable then of referring them to the services locally to be able to get their health needs met, which works fine. But I think the other side of, of having somebody, somebody else um, talk about this stuff, and it, it seems to me that the federal government doesn't actually think about what the state governments are doing and, and how do you work as a team of people. So in, in closing the gap, we have a Aboriginal, 
a peak body that is the driver of getting health measures out there to community and, and delivering um, health practitioners, but it's not the same as having the health nurses. So they're in there going to bat the whole time. So what difference will the voice make? The voice won't make any difference. Uh, the voice will be a voice and there won't be any collaborations um, to the grassroots people. It will be a top-down measure that will then December, but I dis dismantle a lot of the, the good will, will that's being made at the grassroots level. But I say about the voice is this, that in order for them to actually think about how do the government of Victoria with their self-determination policies, self-determination means that I get to decide what is best for me. I, I don't have Russell coming in and saying, Russell, uh, Cheryl, you have to do this. So for me, I think that where the voice fails is that it hasn't talked about developing grassroots people to, to come in out of the mushroom or out of their mushroom homes to actually be engaged in the broader community and to develop their skills. And well, if I said to you, uh, as I said to you, if you Am I free to go out and say that my senior elders in my electorate are opposed to the voice? And you said, yes, Russell, you can say that. And I have been telling my colleagues that for a number of weeks and a number of them don't want to hear it. If there were three things against the voice, what would they be? Because you're advocating a no vote, is that correct? That's correct. Right. Now, having said that, what, what three things should people be taking into account? Okay, so, per, so from a, a bigger picture, there are, Aboriginal won't have a vote because they're not in the electoral roll. That's the first thing. So they don't have a voice. I have a voice because I'm on the electoral, I'm, in, I'm registered as a voter. Then secondly, we haven't given the, those people um, in that committee any authority to speak on our behalf. And thirdly, the third thing is most importantly that we must look at the number, the amount of money that's been spent on all of the Aboriginal areas because there's no outcomes. The data still, still tells us that we have high incarceration rate, we have poor, very poor health outcomes. Our kids aren't even getting, um, getting taught um, the literacy and numeracy in schools isn't um, increasing and certainly we had a uh, terrific program here that was local where we did have 98% but since the change in, in governments and the lack of, uh, of knowledge around how to work with Aboriginal people, it's never going to happen. Where do we go from here? Well, I think we uh, have to advocate for, uh, from my point of view, to actually work at a local level to find how we can develop, uh, do a community development program where we have our communities come in and talk about their aspirations and talk about legislation and self-determination and those sorts of things because I think it's more important to actually keep getting kids into school and I just came from um, having a uh, morning tea at Druin Primary School, which has got over 600 um, kids and quite a few Aboriginal kids in that, in that school. And so the principal has said to me, can we do this more regularly, more often? And I said, yes, we can. And so that's about uh, developing a program where elders come in, uh, parents come in, and they're seen in the school to be able to uh, hear kids read to help with uh, kids' writing and so on because the teacher's got enough to do when they've got over 25 in the classroom. So there are things to do. So it's a matter of the community, and I'm about to call an Aboriginal community meeting to, to actually get them to put down their aspirations. That's great. When will that meeting be? Uh, in the next next three weeks. Right. Do you want to come? Uh, well, I'm not, I'm not an Aboriginal, but if I'm allowed to come, I'd love oh, to that, come along. Just because you're a non-Aboriginal doesn't mean to say you're not, in, you're not welcome. I think that these are the sorts of things where people 
in your position and other members of the, and particularly those service providers who, who have got carriage of programs for Aboriginal people. It's about building the relationship and the trust and let's make some of these things work and then advocating through, whether it be the grant process between, um, that is on the federal agencies um, page or whether it's um, grants that come from from um, from Victoria side. So there's many there's many ways and the philanthropic philanthropic societies. There's always something there, and I think that if we can we can work together as teams of people to try and make this work, then I think that we're going to have a better um, a better outcome for all of those young families and single mums and all those sorts of people with their health. I've got one last question. Do you believe that Australians um, are keen to sort out the problems with the Indigenous community? I, I have seen um, such a turnaround in terms of people wanting to understand culture better. I've seen people engage better. But I've also seen the, the other side, the, the people that have that, um, that don't understand any of the cultural um, relationships that have gone on. Um, you know, we never ceded the country to the British and all of those things need to be looked at and worked through, but not from a parliament point of view. Um, until Australia becomes a republic and, and we need to work towards a one Australia and not just black and white Australia or or um, people coming in as migrants. And I think that all of this stuff isn't about politics anyway, it's about the human race. How do we actually lift the human race to accept each other, warts and alls, and to be able to work side by side and get those areas where we need to work as a, as a team of people to raise the bar for those less fortunate. I think it's a good place to end, Cheryl. Thanks very much for coming in today. I'm glad you had a great morning tea. We'll be back with another uh, small episode of uh, my conversation with Cheryl, and I hope this has been something that you've been pleased to hear. Thanks very much. Authorised by Russell Broadbent, Liberal Party, Warragul.